You know, when I watch horror movies where the scares are CG, it just takes me right out of it. It just doesn't feel real. And and it's I'm trying to create a visceral experience. So it was very important to me to do everything practical in camera. The trailer just did not prepare me at all. Good. And I just appreciated it so much. And I want to know how involved you were with making the trailer. I was invited to participate in making the trailer. Um, I was very relieved that from the from the get go, Disney was on the same page as me that they did not want to put any spoilers in the trailer. Um, now they cut the trailer that is out there in the world, and I think it is fantastic. If I had been left to my own devices, I would not have made a trailer that good. So uh, thank God they're pros at what they do. They know how to market this movie and I, my hat is off to them. And I think they crushed it. So yeah, it's it's pretty spoiler free. It's funny because a lot of people will leave comments on the trailer saying like, well, this, you know, I know what happens. I promise you, you don't know what happens. How much fun is it to look at internet theories before this comes out? Because I had my own, just like even rewatching the trailer today and hearing how the audio was used, I was like, mm. I had a completely different idea of what the movie was. So sure. like, how much are you really engaging with the internet around this? I read a lot of the comments, you know? Um, so far they've been positive, so I haven't really had my feelings hurt that much. As soon as my feelings get hurt, I'm out. But um, no, I do, I do keep an eye on them, and uh, it's fun. Some people have brought up some really amazing points that I've never even realized. Like, people pointed out that Barbarian is an angram of Airbnb, and I did not realize that until way too late. Somebody pointed out that 476 Barbary, the address of the house, that like 476 is the year that Rome fell to the Barbarians. I didn't know that. You know, it's fun. It's fun to like watch these sleuths kind of do their thing and pick it apart. We're asking so many questions. We're kind of yelling at the screen for you guys. Are you kind of trying to answer questions for your own characters when you're on set? Well, I think the, the script was so well written by Zach um, that you it, it, it makes sense. He really kind of um, fills in those kind of like loopholes and makes sure that there's there's proper diversions. Um, it makes sense why uh, you know Tess she she tries to get out of these scenarios again and again and again, and she keeps kind of getting pushed back. Um, and also, you know, Zach is a really fantastic uh, director, so he was always there to kind of talk things through and make sense of anything that maybe was confusing at the time. I, I trusted Zach as well. I mean, um, he crafted, yeah, it was such a tight script. It was such a, a thoughtful s script that um, anything that I questioned were usually just very minor word choices or, um, and, and, and Zach has such a great ear for dialogue. You know, he's got such a <laughs> ear for realism that he was um, he was so supportive of any kind of like minor tweaks that maybe made it sound a little bit more realistic or natural. Um, but but no, I never I this I didn't question him at all. He was such a he was such a, a thoughtful, creative leader. They're kind of like two different sides of the same coin, you know? Like, Tess is a, is a woman who goes into this this deadly situation identifying threat, and her brain is working overtime trying to, trying to determine if she's in danger or not. AJ is a man going into the same situation. He's in danger, he's caused wreckage, and he's oblivious to it, and he's just kind of blindly cruising through. So it was a, it's a comment on, on, the, on the mental energy that women have to exert uh, to protect themselves that men don't. And so that was just a way to kind of riff on, on the, the disparity of those two attitudes. Uh, Tess's introduction is kind of really introducing the, the film and the where, where we are. We're, we're at this Airbnb in this strange situation with um, Keith, Bill Skarsgård's character, um, which then leads to uh, going down into the basement. I think the, the kind of, it, the, what's interesting about the film is the shifts in, in tone and at the beginning of the film, it kind of feels like there is more of a romantic vibe to it. You know, they kind of start clicking. It kind of feels very soft and nice. And then suddenly, you know, we go down to the basement and suddenly there's another complete tonal change um, as we find out that there's, you know, there's something bad lurking down there. What are we supposed to do? I don't know. I don't know. Why don't you, why don't you come inside? 
and we'll call these idiots. How intentional is Bill Skarsgård in that role? Because there was a point where he said, like, I'm not a monster. And just knowing it, I was like, uh -huh. Yeah, he says, what, what do I look like, people. a monster? And everyone's like, wow. Uh. <laughs> I actually didn't think of that as a joke until the first time we screened it for an audience and everyone laughed. I was like, oh yeah, I guess that is pretty fun. Um, yeah, I mean, Bill was perfect casting for this because he has such a history with the audience. Horror audiences know him, you know, and they expect something from him. So as soon as he opens that door, everyone's like, oh, you know, and that's just what you want. Being with an audience watching this was so effective. And I was wondering before, um, you know, being ready with your final cut, did you, who, who did you show it to? And did you have to show it to an audience before being like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for this to be out. Yeah, so there's a testing process that you go through when you make a, a movie with a studio. So, you know, you, you go and you, you go to a, a big theater packed with, you know, regular folks and, and um, who hopefully have some interest in horror. And then you, you, they watch the movie and then they like grade you. You know, they, they like fill out a thing and you get a, you get a number grade and it, it's really, really stressful. Um, and then you, you take that feedback and you make some changes that you hope are gonna bring your score up. And we did another one and we brought our score up and um, you know, then you learn more. And, and uh, it's a process that I think is actually really valuable. I'm certainly not one of those filmmakers who's like, I don't care what anybody says. Like, I care, I want the audience to have fun. This is a movie for, for like the general audience. I'm not making um, Whatever. I'm not making an arty farty sort of a thing. I'm trying to make a big crowd pleasing popcorn movie. Like that's, I, I want it to be a roller coaster. So I, I really want to incorporate the feedback. Well, this one's pretty memorable. I think this might be my my favorite. Uh, I guess getting turned into a walrus is sort of tough to beat. Um, that's that old chestnut. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's fun to, exp I, I like, I love the horror movies growing up, I didn't really get to watch them. So they were always like, like forbidden fruit, you know? And, and so now, so like the more gruesome the, the cover of a movie was, like the more I wanted to see it, you know, the more uh, graphic and gory. So now getting to do some of this stuff, it's kind of like, I'm, I'm like living out some childhood fantasies. This process might seem overwhelming, but with a little practice, it can soon become a pleasurable experience. This is perfectly natural.